Today's lesson is found in the uh, Old Testament in the book of Joshua. Joshua uh, is the beginning of, I think it's about 16 books uh, that uh, record the uh, history of the children of Israel. The title of the lesson today is Be Strong and Courageous. Something that we definitely need in this last days that we are living in. We need to be strong and we need to be courageous. And this is the, the law of the word of God. He demands, uh, he anticipates us. He wants us to be strong and to be of good courage. Our lesson is found Joshua chapter number one, verse one through six, 11, 16 through 19, and uh, Joshua verse 11, chapter 11, verse 21 through 23. Our related scriptures is Numbers 27, 15 through 23. And then we can also look into Deuteronomy chapter number 11, uh, chapter 31 chapter 34, and then go back at the end of the lesson, we pick back up Joshua chapter number 22, uh, verse 1 through 9. The books of history are 16 books. Uh, if you if you are a student of the Bible, you know there are different sections, even though we have 66 books total in the entire Bible, which consists of the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, in the Old Testament is broken down into different divisions. The book of Joshua is the first book of history of the children of Israel. Joshua means uh, the Lord's salvation. And this book portrays Jesus Christ as the captain of our salvation. Every book in the Bible, all 66 books, points you to Jesus Christ. You just have to be a student of the Bible and study how God in his infinite wisdom, in his infinite knowledge, wants us to see the entire plan of salvation from Genesis all the way to Revelations. The book of Joshua, the Lord's salvation, Jesus Christ as the captain of our salvation. All of this started back way before we were ever even thought of. God knew that there was gonna be a problem with humanity. And he already made the plan before we were even born that he would deliver us, that he would redeem us. And so the, 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 if you continue to read in the scriptures from Genesis all the way to Revelation, you'll see a bloodline thread of the blood of Jesus Christ that delivers us, that redeems us from the curse of sin. Amen. Uh, the book of Joshua, uh, the purpose of Joshua was God's good purpose can always be glor glorious, gl gloriously fulfilled when we faithfully trust and obey him. Developing this book develops God's people, uh, preparing us for uh, the life of uh, Christianity. Joshua was a warrior. He he was chosen by God himself. His book helps to prepare us for battle. What we are supposed to do in the midst of situations that we are confronted with in this life. Our battles are not like Joshua's battle per se. You know, we when we uh, get into the lesson, you'll see how he went in. He had to strategize and, and uh, develop his his army, the men that were going to be fighting with him. Joshua was a strategist. His book also helps us to understand God's strategy, not his strategy. 
He was getting his orders from God. He was handpicked by God. The implementation of God's strategy for victory, it teaches us how to conquer the different situations that we are confronted with in our life. It also uh, helps us to grasp God's good purpose in our life. This is all about our Christian character, our warrior spirit. We are in a war. It's a spiritual war. We are in a battle. Uh, I think uh, uh, President President um, Biden said we are in a battle for the soul of America. We are in a battle for the soul of our life for eternity's sake. We are warring people, grasping God's good purpose for our life as a Christian, as a believer. God has a purpose for every one of our lives. We need to find out what that purpose is and be about his business, preparing us, conquering us, dividing us from our flesh to our spirit the accountability to complete God's mission. We are accountable as believers. We say we are believers. We say we're Christians. We are being held accountable for the deeds that's done in our body. We are being held accountable to be the representatives of of, uh, God's kingdom. We have a duty and a responsibility, understanding what our role is in this life. Being ready for God's work. Success is determined by one's ability to become and remain sensitive to the Lord's authority and methods. This is how we measure success, not by because you went, because uh, you graduated from Harvard Law School. That does not determine your success as far as God is concerned. God is the success. God is the one that helps you to reach the higher levels. You can, you can be the president of the United States. You can be the world leader, but without God, you are nothing. The, uh, the record of great victories, victory over only arises when one fully understands temptation and wholly depends on the Lord's means for deliverance. We are being tempted in this life. We're being strategized in this life by the enemy who is well, well more experienced than we are. Who can stand against the hand of God? Who can fight Satan, which is your greatest enemy? There's where your strategy comes into place. Only God can defeat him. The scripture tell us greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Well, how do you know that it's greater unless you yield to the spirit of the Holy Spirit? of the Holy Ghost and look to God for his direction and guidance to teach you and to give you the strategy as to how to defeat the enemy who is well more qualified, who has fought way more battles than we ever could fight. We have to have something more. We have to have that relationship with God, understanding God's strategy in your own personal life. The elevation of the mission, God's full favor is found only when one both understands and diligently seeks God's complete purpose. We have a complete purpose in life. And the only way that we're going to find out is that we look to the Lord, not depend on what you know. And we are living in a time where so much going on. We are bombarded on every side. You can't, you can't even turn the corner. Uh, I live on a busy street here. And all day long, uh, uh, the uh, paramedics, the fire trucks, the, the uh, speeding of the uh, police cars, I'm always confronted 
with all of this going throughout the day and then addition, the additional uh, news clips and all different types of turmoil, family problems, all these different things, life has to have some type of strategy. All this trouble, glo global warming, uh, all this climate change, and we see all of the people that that uh, don't have jobs or don't have enough money to pay the bills, and you know you're afraid they're going to take your car, they're going to take your home, and so many things going on, so many deaths going on, so much trouble and turmoil. You have to have a strategy. You have to have God. That's the focus of your life. You cannot think you're going to make it through this life on your own terms. Because you have enough money to do this, that, and the other. Or you got enough in your savings. People's savings is being, being torn apart. Companies cheating people. It's so much trouble. This book's help us to prepare, conquer, and divide these situations in a manageable way so that we don't become overwhelmed with the issues of life. And because Joshua, in his strategy, he was able to depend on God himself. He looked to God for his help. Before we get into our lesson, the little bit of background that we want to touch on is uh, how Joshua got into uh, his leadership position. Moses, who was, who was the leader of the children of Israel, he brought them out of the land of Egypt after them being in slavery for 400 plus years, maybe 420 years but I know it was 400 years. And Moses as leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, they couldn't make it over into the promised land, which was a couple of days. You know, it, it wasn't that long uh, after they left Egypt that they could have walked directly into the promised land. But God let them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. There was over 600,000 men not including the women and the children that were in this wilderness wandering. And during the process of this wilderness wandering, like I said, they could have been in, um, in the promised land way ahead of time, but they murmured, they complained. And this, is, this, is a, this was a problem. Moses received the Ten Commandments during that during those wandering years in the wilderness. And Moses was uh, constantly trying to uh, encourage the people to trust God and believing. They complained, they said, oh, we out here in this wilderness and we, we, we all we eating in is this manna. You was eating. Some of them talking about, you need to put us, send us back to Egypt. We're gonna die out here in the wilderness. And for 40 years, Moses was had to deal with all of this, okay? So what happened was, he failed, Moses failed to reverence God. He failed to give God the glory. Uh, and this, this seemed like a small thing, but with God, ain't nothing small when it comes to sin. There's no big sin and little sin. He failed to give God the glory. And God told him to smoke the rock one time and he, you know, like bammed on it or something, you know. He didn't do it the way God wanted him to do it. So God told Moses, I'll let you see the promised land, but you're not going over in there. So this is how we come to Joshua being chosen. And Moses spake unto the Lord saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. He recognized he blew it. And the Lord said unto Moses, take thee Joshua, 
the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thy hand upon him, and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And Moses did at the, as the Lord commanded him. And he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Do you see what's going on in the beginning of the story? It's always about God. It's always about what he wants, how he wants it. It ain't got nothing to do with us. The, the only thing got to do with us is that we be obedient to him. We cannot make up the rules like we want to. We have to do what God tell us to do. He was chosen by God. There's a scripture in the book of Matthew, for many are called, but few are chosen. Means that many people hear the gospel message, but only a few respond to it and receive salvation. The ultimate goal in life, as far as your relationship with God, is salvation. Repenting, for one thing, we're baptized in Jesus' name and we are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Taking on his spirit, the Lord, the God of spirits of all flesh, set a man over his congregation. He was handpicked. And the reason why we are here today, God has picked us to be in this place at this time, this is no coincidence. It ain't no coincidence that you just here. Oh, cause somebody invited you. God is dealing with your spirit. Every Sunday that you come here, every time you talk to somebody about God, it's God that's doing this to you, not you yourself. Recognize who's in charge. God handpicked Joshua, just like he handpicked Moses, just like he handpicked you so that you could receive salvation. Now we take Joshua. Moses had went up to the to 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 the mount to see what was going on. He could God said, I'll let you see it, but you ain't going in. Now that ought to, that's a message all in itself. We've been sitting here all this long time, down through the years, through the pandemic, where a lot of us could have been dead. A lot of us got sick with the pandemic, but God, he, he spared our life for such a time as this. He spared us because he wants us to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. The promised land. Now we see Moses that went off the scene, and now here Joshua. Handpicked by God to do the rest of the work that Moses left behind. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Lord, have mercy. 
He said, just like I was with Moses, Joshua, I'm going to be with you. We got the same promise as believers and all the trouble and turmoil that's going on in this life. If we yield to God, if we look to him, if we want to accept the promises. If we look for his guidance, he will guide us. If we look for his strength, he will give us strength. He said in verse six, be strong and of a good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Fathers that he's talking about. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob back in, uh, in the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we find some of these characters that are the fathers. And he made the promises to these individuals. But the same promises hold true today as a believer when we yield ourselves, yield our lives to the great creator of mankind. When we look to him for his help and his guidance, the same thing that he did for Moses, Joshua, the Old Testament characters, the, 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 the same things that he did to help them to overcome obstacles in different situations, he would do it for us. The promises are yea and nay. But the, and let's, let's look at it this way too. But the same thing that happened when you disobey God, expect a just recompense of reward on that one too. God ain't one-sided. He ain't no genie in the lamp. He ain't, he ain't set up where he just gonna give you everything and then you do your own thing. He don't play that. You either in there or you're not. Either you're with God or you're not. In order for you to receive the benefits and the blessings that God has prepared for them that love him is that you do what he tells you to do. Joshua eleven sixteen through 19. So Joshua took all that land. He took the hills and all the South country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same. Even from the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir, even unto Belgad, in the valley of Lebanon, under Mount Hermon, and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. Joshua made, made war a long time with all those kings. Verse 17. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. He was a fighting man. He was a warrior. But he didn't, he didn't back off. And just think about the odds that was against him when he, when he first came on the scene. Took him about seven years to conquer what he did. But just think about it. You done wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. You done watched God destroy so many other people in the, in the wilderness, the ones that died off, out. You done watched God uh, part the Red Sea as you came out of Egypt. You done watched Pharaoh's army get drowned in the sea. You done watched what the people did to Moses as a leader. And now God is telling you to take 600,000 600, plus men, women, and children and go into a land that you've never seen. Go into a place where you got to go in and kill up all these people. You see, go kill up all these people as God commanded you to do. 
And think about it. We're not confronted with, with issues like this. God ain't asking us to go in there and kill nobody but your flesh. God is asking you to kill out those things that, you know, that got you all uh, where you can't deal with God, where you can't be the effective uh, person, the effective Christian. He All he telling you to kill out is your flesh. Quit watching that porno. Quit going out here carousing in the street, playing on your wife. Quit all that cussing and all this other stuff that's getting you all, all uh, messed up. Quit causing trouble in your family. Quit making problems in the lives of other people. Quit being a busybody in other men's matters. That's what he asking us to kill out. Now, which would you rather do? I would rather take my chances in this life, then what God asked you to go in there and kill up folks, family, this man was a warrior, but his heart was chosen by God. He had a mind to do the things that God told him to do. This is where God wants us to understand our relationship with him. I'm laying this out before you. I want you to understand what it means for me and you to have a relationship with each other. I'm not even asking you to go out and kill these people. I'm asking you to kill your flesh. I'm asking you to get yourself under control. I'm asking you to pay attention to what I say in my word. Read and study my word. Live my word. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Because if all you're doing is just listening to the Bible, not doing what the Bible say, you just fooling yourself. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, say the Hivites, Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all other they took in battle. The reason why he wanted all these people killed, because they did not serve him. They were sacrificing their children uh, to false gods. They were prostituting one another. They were murdering up folk. Doing things that was, uh, that was just ungodly. And before you can go in and take the land, you got a clean house. Because if any of these people are left, Guess what they're going to do? They're going to contaminate y'all. That's why God tell you to come out from among them and be ye separated. You can't go back to the club once you done uh, uh, got with God. Ain't no sense in you clubbing. It ain't going to work. Either you in or you out. Either you all God or you ain't. You can't serve two and your love be true. You can't be what you want to be and leave God out. And then tell about, well, I'm going to go over here, you know, and uh, I'm going to do da 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 You can't serve two like that. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Either you make up your mind and do what God tells you to do, or you keep stepping. These are all the territories that he conquered. No wonder it took him so long, about seven years. And at the time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashad, there remained. And some of them he did not kill because some of them, uh, God let him to know that some of them repented, some of them turned from their, their uh, idolatrous ways, some of them wanted God, 
one of the people that helped them uh, doing this endeavor was a, was a prostitute named Rahab. And Rahab said, I'll help y'all as long as my family is saved. That's where we at in this day and time. That's where you at. Make up your mind. Make up your mind what you're going to do. Who can I get to you, Jesus? What can I do to let you know that I'm serious about salvation? It ain't got nothing to do with leadership. You know who your leader is? Your leader is God Almighty. Your leader is Jesus Christ. If the leader never does what he's supposed to do, guess what? God still gonna hold you responsible for the choices that you make for the deeds done in your own body. Well, I would have, but my past, your pastor don't mean nothing. What means something is God. Because sometimes you got to break away your friends, you only going to stand before God to give an account for the deeds done in your own body. Only you. And there is no excuse. You know why? Because Jesus nailed all the excuses to the cross. Jesus made it possible. I would have, but my job, your job don't mean nothing. Okay? None of, nothing means nothing but God. As far as he concerned, he just that tough. He just that, he, he is just the one that can demand your attention because you recognize that he the one that controls your end and your beginning and everything in between. When you recognize the authority of God, when you recognize that your very breath is dependent upon whether he's going to give it to you or not, then your attitude changes. And you recognize, Lord, I ain't nothing. Ain't no sense for me bragging about it. I ain't nothing. You are everything. You just got to roll with it. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war after seven years. We can't even last seven days sometime without getting in trouble. We are always confronted with making decisions about if I'm going to do what God tells me to do or, or I'm, I'm, I'm going to help God. He's just too slow. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to fix it. You ain't fixing nothing. You're just getting yourself deeper. When you learn who controls, uh, there's a song that the choir used to sing, everything moves by the power of God. When you understand who is controlling the entire planet, the entire galaxy, the entire universe, the very breath that you breathe, he knows the hairs on your head. When you understand who is really in control, you will be quiet. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And let him do what he do best. And that's be your God. Amen, somebody. You measure success. These are different ways that uh, the world, they, they got strategies and they got marketing techniques and uh, they got executives uh, and, and they got all of these different things to measure success. Joe Cool, welcome to success and enjoy the journey. Do you measure, measure success by the world standards? If you do, let me tell you something. It ain't going to cut it with God. Everybody wants to be success. YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, X, Twitter, Instagram. We all have access now to where you can get your 10 minutes of fame. You got people on there dancing. You know, you got people on there giving tips, cooking tips and all of that. You know, everybody is a star. How do you measure, measure success? Well, I'm just going to say how I measure success is how God will take my life and make it to be what he would have me to be. 
And I struggle with that. But that's my focal. That's my focal point. It said that the uh, in book in the book of Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You want to get to success? Get in God. Because if you do it outside of him, and when you get to the top, of what you think is success. You will realize how many steps you done missed. You will also realize that there is no success without God. A lot of people have drove themselves crazy trying to be what other people think they should be. Well, I'm old enough to know now that it doesn't matter what people think about me. It doesn't matter if you think I'm not this, that, and the other. What matters to me the most is what God thinks about me. There are obstacles in this life. Obstacles are anything that blocks one's way or prevents or hinders your progress. And you sitting up here worrying about because the sister didn't speak to you or sister so-and-so talked about you or your neighbors, they got a better car than you got, or they got more money than you have, and his wife looked finer than mine. All these little trivial things, their kids are more successful than mine. They got a better job than I got. They dress better than me. All of these obstacles that are in your way, and you got too much you got too much going on in your head. And you can't please God with all this junk in the trunk. You will never be what God would have you to be until you change your crazy ways. Change your attitude, your outlook, your disposition on life and learn that this. This is one thing I knew before I got saved. I was in my apartment getting high with one of my girlfriends. And we had us uh, back then, Colt 45 and some marijuana. And we were sitting down and just smoking dope and, and just getting high. And I told her, you know what? I said, if I could find God, I know my life gonna change. I thank God that he must've heard me because that's been 40 something years ago. And here I stand today to tell you that the obstacles that had me bound, the things that had me where I could not help myself. Yes, I could not help myself, but I had sense enough to know, and I thank God for that revelation back then that if I find God, my life would change. And my life changed. The obstacles, the things that hindered me, the things where I could not help myself. Man, the can't help is real bad. I can't help but to do this because it was the nature of sin. And then I repented. I went to church one day. I repented of my sin, I got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of my sin. And he filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost because that was the plan, like I told you from Genesis to Revelation, that's the plan. Salvation is the plan. It's the whole duty of man to fear God and to keep his commandments. The death of Moses, uh, he was in charge of leading 2 million people into unknown territory, pressures, and fear of war. This is Joshua. 2 million people. 
after coming out, he had to lead those people into battle. He had to understand the strategies of God. All the obstacles that would have that would have mainly ran most of us away. Because we can't hardly stand it when people don't even look at us in the right way. We can't hardly stand it if people don't even speak to us. You know, the pastor's wife didn't say nothing to me. And, and your problem is what? If this is all you about, it's the superficial of being something in the sight of people. You have really missed the mark. If you worrying about every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Sally, Jane, and Sue, you have missed the mark. We are looking for a strategy to get out of here. We are looking for a strategy to live again in eternity. We all have had our times uh, where we have, you know, we have gone astray. I'm not perfect. God knows I'm not. But God has always been there for me. He has always helped me through the difficulties of life, through the obstacles that have come up, up, up against me. He has always made a way, open doors. My husband has a saying, he always come through, Sandra. And that is so true. Don't be afraid for I am with you. This is what God is saying. Don't be afraid. I'm always with you. Don't be discouraged. For I am your God. He wants to be your God too. Just like he was. So this is one, one of the things that this lesson didn't cover. But during one of the battles that uh, Joshua had fought. Do you not know that God held the sun back? so that they could defeat the enemy. That's how much power, that's how much uh, commitment God had to Joshua and the children of Israel. The commitment to hold the sun back. Do you know any man, any scientific order that can hold the sun back? Do you not know that? God held the sun back so that they could defeat the enemy. That's how committed God is. To, to He was to Joshua, and he has that same commitment to you. He will do what he has to do. Anytime a God that, that has created everything will come down 42 generations, put on a robe of flesh, didn't have to die for me, but he did. Raised himself from the dead and went on back in the glory. And, and before he left, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, girl, that where I am, you're going to be also. Anytime you got a God with that kind of commitment, it's your problem. Many people you know going to die for you. Many people do you know that would leave uh, a palace and be humiliated the way he was and then come down and say, but I'm going to die for you. You know, I love you so much, girl. I'm going to die for you. Thank you, Jesus. And all you asking me to do right now, God, this is what God, God is requiring out of us. Believe. Just believe. And when you believe God, you'll do what God say. And when you believe God, he'll be your all in all. He'll be the one that you trying to uh, get the brownie points with. When you believe God, he is the center of your eye. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. There is nothing that I won't do for you because I love you just that much. We can choose to be brave and courageous. We must choose faith over fear. We must choose obedience over complacency. We have, we have a choice in the matter. He told Israel, he said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve God or are you, you going to serve the false God, Baal? You got a choice in the matter. 
And I'm going to tell you, if you're fooling around and trying to figure it out, you need to make a choice real quick. We must leave behind the old and embrace the new territories, new opportunities, and new places that God is calling us to travel into. New territories, new lands, new horizons. God is calling each of us to choose his way over our own way. Choose God's way. His direction over our own. It will take courage to trust God. And it would require us to be brave when we want to hide. And sometimes we do. We want to be like an ostrich and put our head in the sand trying to hide when God is telling you, don't be discouraged, don't be afraid. You ain't got to be scared. I find myself in this day and time talking myself off the ledge. And I've listened to my own spirit that says, you know, you need to calm down. Don't get excited. Calm yourself. You have to speak to your soul. And, and don't be scared, be calm. I have to calm myself down because so many things fight you in this life. And if you don't start paying attention to how you getting all triggered off for no reason, you'll go off and do something kooky. And in those moments when our hearts feel weak and fear begins to rise inside us, that's when we need to remember God's promises. He is always with us, always. Wherever God calls us to go, never forget, he will always lead if we let him. So it's uh, 10, 15 now, and I'm, Still not finished. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Every day we need to read the word of God. Every day we need to do what God tell us to do in his word. He said, let it be like frontless before your eyes. Always got the book of the word of God before you. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Amen. Knowing God's word and doing it, being in his word, allowing it to fill our minds and then doing what the Bible says is Joshua's secret to success. That's the secret in our success. So uh, I think I better stop right now. Um, we are soldiers in the army of God. And um, God is calling us in these last days to show forth the praises of him that sent us. God is encouraging us not to be uh, weak individuals, but even when we get weak, he makes up the difference. He said, because when I'm weak, then I'm strong because I'm strong through him. We all have our moments. We all have our fears and our doubts. We all have uh, periods of unbelief and, and we have periods where we're just shaky and we don't know what to do or how to do. That's why we always need to lean on his everlasting arm because I'm pretty sure, and it doesn't say this in the scripture, but I'm pretty sure that there were times when, when Joshua had second guessed himself. I think it's part of what we call the human condition. We all have had times when we didn't know what to do. And if you have not been there, God bless you, you know, woo woo. But what we are looking for is the reality of humanity as to who we are as individuals. The scripture tell us we, even apostle Paul, with all what he knew, with all the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience that he went through, he said, we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. 
persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Because the hope is not in what I know. The hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Minister Waveney. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful lesson. So many great points. Uh, before I say anything, I want to thank everyone for their prayers in my absence. Um, it was felt, appreciated, needed. And I'm just so grateful that the Lord allowed me to return and be a part of Sunday school once again. Um, I don't even know where to start, Sister Wyatt, because you did such an excellent job. Thank but you, what Jesus. I would say is some, you know, in reading the lesson and when you think you have, it, it's kind of difficult to not include all of the chapters in the book of Joshua to really get exactly what took place from the time Moses died. But I will go back to Moses first and I would say this, it is so easy when we are in power or in a situation that we can choose a friend or somebody that we like or somebody that is close to us. And even though Joshua was close to Moses, Moses still confided in God to ask God who he wants in that position. Yes. And, and I look at that as a great example because we find in ourselves in our world today so much favoritism and cliques and people choosing friends and family to do a job which God has planned for someone else to do. So it's important. Um, that's a great example that Moses set for us. And the other example about Moses is the light that he led. Joshua and Caleb is the only two that were among those that were about to enter the promised land. Everyone else died in the wilderness. It was a new generation that was born in the wilderness, was about to enter the promised land. So Joshua saw how Moses operated, things that he did. So Moses was a great example. And we as well need to be great example and prepare that person after us to lead. Because that's what Joshua did. He was called to lead the people into the promised land. Uh, the next thing is, this seven year journey wasn't easy as it appears. It, it wasn't easy. The title of the lesson, Be Brave and Courageous, it means that you know what you're going to have, it's going to be difficult. It was not easy. Actually, the second city they were about to conquer, they were defeated. The city of Ai, they were defeated. And why did they were defeated? Because there was sin in the camp. Someone stole some robes and some gold and, and they were struggling in the camp. So when go Oh, he froze, he's frozen, he's frozen. Go ahead, now you could go. <laughs> we can hear you now, go ahead. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. I've got one thing to say. Yeah. The fight, the old man, new man, and the flesh and the spirit fight is real. That's oh, yeah. A, that's a real fight. That is a real fight. You know, but fight thank God you ain't got to go out here and kill up a bunch of folk to fight. You know what I'm saying? Is what we're doing is is killing ourselves out, you know, uh not letting our flesh overtake us. And it's a daily battle. Yeah. We are constantly, we are, we are always in a war. And 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 you have to have a, a spirit of, of a warrior. You know, you're never you're never out of battle. You're constantly fighting the good fight of faith. You're constantly on a daily basis pulling down the strongholds of the enemy in your own personal life. I can't look at you and say, you know, well, you ought to have victory over that. That ain't my issue. My issue is something else. You have to focus in on, on uh, 
on what's what's eating you what what's bothering you what is the thing in your life that you got to do battle over that you got to strategize how do you protect yourself in these battles and if you ask god if you trust god if you look to god he will give you the strategy to overcome yourself not nobody else the crowd is everybody going here everybody just running running and everybody going in the same direction so you think but that's not always true. God holds you accountable for the decisions that you make as it relates to him, as it relates to your relationship with him. It has nothing to do with nobody else. If the pastor don't get it, if the if the uh, the mother in the church doesn't get it, if people don't understand where you're coming from, that ain't your issue. What you have to do is focus in on what is God telling me to do? And this is where a lot of times we get in trouble because we won't do what God tells us to do because you're waiting on somebody else to give you the directions and God already done gave you the directions. God done already told you, shut up. But no, uh -uh, I'm, I'm let you, you know, I'm let you know where I'm coming from. You ain't going to be dogging me like that. You know, we get this ticket in our neck and snapping our fingers and everything. And we get to think, you know, well, I got a degree. Who cares? God don't care nothing about your degree. You talking about dealing with the mass of the universe. You talking about the one that controls your very, uh, the next breath you breathe. If he don't put it in there, it ain't coming. So why are we worrying about these, these, these small things? Instead of us looking at the bigger picture, we have to look to God for his direction and for his guidance. We have to look to him for his leadership. Uh, is Carol Wade there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what you got to say, girl? <laughs> I um, appreciate the lesson today. Um, and I just wanted to sort of respond to uh, Brother Leon's comment about the struggle being real between us. And um, uh, one of the questions that I had to ask is, is my love true to myself or am I going to be true to God? And when everything is cool, when everybody's going in the same direction, but when I want to go a different route than God wants to do, then my choice has to be based on where he wants me to go as opposed to what I want to do. And uh, that took me a long time to try to figure, and I'm still, I think it's a lifetime um, Learning. time uh, battle. I, I think that at some point you kind of figure out what this is all about. It's like, oh, I was baptized in your name. <laughs> and I was like, so I died to myself supposedly. And then, uh -huh. I came up in the newness of life and I mm -hmm. I said, okay, the newness of life is that I want to live the life of Christ. And um, so many times you have to get that in your head straight before you can walk yeah. it out. And um, one of the things that I appreciated about what you said in the lesson is that God we have to have our own relationship with God. And he says, just like I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. That is yeah. a confidence booster that if yes. he ever, if Joshua ever got in a situation where he doubted, he went back to that point where yes. he first met God and where yes. God, you know, conveyed confidence in him. And I think yes. many times, you know, I have always gone back to the day that I got the Holy Ghost because I was yes. like, am I really saved? Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Why am I here? And then I remember ah, that day that the Lord spoke to me and yes. I spoke in other tongues and he said, it is well in your soul. And so yes. we always have to go back to that come to Jesus meeting where yeah. he has introduced himself to you face to face and yeah. you have said, yes, I will. And yeah. so um, I really appreciate that about the lesson. And then the last thing is um, 
Moses led the people for 40 years and it was a great, great thing. And we should not know him just by his mistake. We should know him by his great leadership, but there always comes a time, even in a great leader's um, responsibility and time that he mm -hmm. has to say, somebody else has to do this. And even though I yeah. want to be the one, it's yeah. like your flesh wants to be the one to conquer all the great things. But yeah. if you're yeah. saying that it's time for somebody else to take them further, then you say, I acquiesce to what you would have me to do. And that's right. That's a hard thing, but that goes back to what Brother Leon was saying is that we have to fight the flesh. And I always want my faith to be stronger than my feeling. And that Amen. was I saw on, on, uh, Pinterest or something like that. I don't know who the author was, but it has really ministered to me in how uh -huh. I live my life. But I, that's all. Thank you for the, uh, the great lesson.